five, last series today, there we go, is here. And the bottom right in the red, he's playing for Game and Gladiators, looking pretty solid against anyone not named Maru. It's Shin. And his opponent in the top left, spawning as the blue Terran player from Team Liquid, he is Cure. Just coming off the the rubber match game five against Classic, which we 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 just we we just saw Cure go go to town. We took a slightly longer break because I'm sure I'm sure everybody watching will agree here. I won't. I can just use the audience to make our point. You guys want better quality games to watch, right? So we gave Cure a couple minutes so he could take a breath and hopefully now come out and, and show his best stuff. So uh, he he was all over the place though. Lots of lots of aggression in the mid game. Still kind of played a macro style versus Classic. We didn't see him really try to cheese uh you know in, in any super super all-in type of way so my expectations for cure is that we'll still see a lot of straight up uh, you know Terran, you know korean Terran style macro up open up with the marines and just try and get damage done maybe a little two on one action who knows yeah i think that's fair but you know we were talking about i think at this when i pulled the illegal act up it said oh you know 60 40 70 30 for shin something like that in, in shin's favor and Going off what you said earlier about this guy that can kind of lead people there, but maybe not always cross over the hump. Shin kind of reminds me of like a curious, you know, this this guy, this <laughs> gatekeeper of the GSL. And he had a great guy, like Star Tail, Curious. He was up there. You're like, man, this guy's on the best. He's on a big team with a bunch of really uh, other huge heavy hitters. And like, well, yeah, he's a practice partner. He's he's a guy that's like close to their level, but not enough to really like beat them in tournaments. So he just helps them train and not share their secrets with other people. And you know, it, over the course of the years, people's roles have obviously changed. But it's 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 like a cool thing to look back on and be like, well, now he's up here playing with the big boys. And that he is. And again, he's been looking really good. So, Elegilac. Ali favors him i don't know if that's going to be true or not Aligulak was very incorrect over the regionals uh, almost to the point where whatever it said was going to happen didn't happen which is uh always a little bit of fun but you're right this is a game where here maybe we see a 2-1-1 maybe we see some sort of two racks play but you're trying to be a betting man seeing what exactly what's going to happen it's going to be a three cc play and look at how greedy cure is being it's a low ground third base <laughs> i checked i checked the second he started so he went for the 240 third base so uh he's, he's he's trying to channel some maru energy from yesterday i guess on location too he has such confidence in this reaper that he has absolutely got nothing to worry about and I, I mean you can't blame him we haven't seen anything from shin that looks ridiculous or over the top in fact if i had to say anything uh, the fact that he took the gas in the natural like he's you know he's he's clearly not rushed for it we haven't even we haven't even gotten to the point where ling speed would be starting up so there's no real way for him to take map control it makes a little bit of sense for cure to kind of play like this uh, however he made that read he has nothing to worry about coming his way anytime soon but shin is in a position to drone quite a bit because of this too he is and yeah this is super ballsy from cure as well so shin we talk about him i I know I said, ah, it kind of reminds me of Curious in terms of results, but he's like a mini dark. He loves his roaches. He loves kind of this mid game sledgehammer of Zerg. And if you are a player that likes a bunch of roaches, I mean, taking low ground third feels kind of scary. But I guess on the flip side, if you get that up in time, it means that you can set up your defense just a little bit sooner. We got Viking. I, did he actually complete that Viking? Yeah. So Viking completed, Banshee's on the way. Nice, just solid defensive 1 1 1 type of setup. And I gotta say, Nate, as we see what's happening here, you said, well, okay, he gets his gas really late. So, Link Speed's not... But I was gonna say, I don't think this is gonna be a Link Speed game. I think this is just you go into Roaches. Link Speed is as delayed as it is. Because I cannot remember the last time that I saw Link Speed... Link Speed's gonna be done at like six minutes. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about the potential of Roaches earlier too, but I think it's just the queen count, right? He's got... He's going up to nine queens. We don't have anything else that's been started it's not like he went straight into the lair after this pool yet we haven't had the evolution chambers start or, or, or even a baneling nest so it is the lair that's the first thing he's getting with the gas besides that so does he take does he just take the other gases now and just try to make this about his lair play does he just start maybe the roach warren with this so he can get speed lined up what, what are you thinking i mean it's only three gas right now which means that it's likely it's not going to be muta's most likely unless he really goes down into it it's not gonna be, it could be Roaches, but oh, look at this dude. So there are some mind games here that we are not privy to. This build from Shin against the ladder Terran, you die 97% of the time. He's far too greedy. But Cure on the flip side, he's being super greedy. And he's going back behind this, which, hey. Oh, oh. oh man, that girl's okay. gone down. But anyways, like going back behind this, Nate is, 
we don't see a lot of this the, yeah I, the, you're, you're, I think you make a really good point because we have we have two people doing something that we, we just haven't seen tremendous amount of and I, I i don't think we've seen any mech games maybe we say one of the tvt's got close ish but uh shin gonna try and go for a surround on these aliens but cure has so many of them especially if he can retain some while he's going for the dive he wants that drone line at the third there are a lot of queens to try and push this away the drones actually managed to get their mandibles around the north aliens Bayo, he just he just lost like eight eight ten hellions for two drones that was giga yikes that's a that's a that's a big yikes for me that was so well handled I'm, I'm looking at this i'm like okay the links are dead queens are out of position he's gonna dive in even with the drone pull like there's a problem he's gonna lose like eight ten twelve drones something like that instead he gets this round on some of the, the some of the hellions on the right side left one is kind of zoned out and all of a sudden yeah nothing gets done yeah banshees are gonna show up and they one shot drones when you pair them together like this so that's a little bit more but i mean shin you knock down 10 hellions like that and we talked about how you can just drone with abandon that is especially true right now and he's also kind of recognized exactly what's happening here i think the banshee's probably though there's no detection but he's recognized what's happening he went down he said oh okay well i see the cyclists here i see the setup it's mech let me drop a rotor let me drop an infestation fit i'm gonna go up to hive pretty quickly and again because of the amount of hellions that he killed he can afford to be as greedy as he is because what exactly can oh, you yeah. expect to do you absolutely you, you smite the map control from the Terran. that's if you go for that dive like the whole the whole point of it is that they're gonna then have to obviously rebuild the drones that they lose but they're probably making some lings while it's happening and you really disrupt the zerg economy and their production cycles but the fact that you lose all the hellions don't get the drones and the zerg is able to kind of counter and see that you don't have too much the only thing I'll say is if this does stabilize into a traditional setup where Kira can kind of comfortably get to that four bases and get enough out to have a bulwark against like a roach push or shove, which it doesn't seem like Shin is really preparing to do big attack anytime soon. He's starting his high spire plus two, hydra range, roach speed is only halfway done. So he's on the way to getting to the point where he can do more, but he's not quite there yet. So for him, it's still a little bit defensive and for Kira, well, knowing Terran Mech and especially his experience with it, I, I would not be surprised. And I'm just gonna just gonna put it out there. It's a very difficult style to to play against and deal with against someone who can be patient. So we'll see where Cure wants to take this. But uh, it's yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be one of those games that maybe ends up getting a little bit drawn out as well. Yeah, but I'm I'm looking at the way Cure's playing this. And first of all, Blue Flame is a lot faster than we generally see it in Mech play, so that allows him to you know play around with the, the links a little bit more. But 1-1 one, one is just about done. He's going to be about a 160-ish supply when that completes. Timing out with Hurricane Engines, which for those of you that missed out the last patch, that's Hurricane Thrusters. It makes the heli or makes the Cyclones that much faster. It's just it's more it's more lore accurate. So they changed the, the icon. They changed the name. Functionality is still just about the same. But Nate, to me, as I look at this, this feels like Kira's getting ready for just like a 2-2 max out. He's not, there's not a lot of diversity in what he's doing. It's a bunch of tanks on the way. He's getting that 2-2 pretty soon he's getting transformation servos but he's just gonna look to max out here on a ton of trad mech and run across the map see exactly what he can do before cure <laughs> before shit has everything before he has the vipers and the brood lords and like all this the stuff that does deal with say 27,000 tanks yeah there's been a lot of discussion over the years about what what makes mech work or not work or what deals with it or doesn't deal with it but a long time ago that they cut that blinding cloud duration in half and i think for the spread out and prolonged mech battles it really opened up a lot of this play style back but this is the tricky part too because you're moving out and yeah we see that that supply is very high for him but it, he's got 90 SCVs, so and, and 14 held back. So he doesn't have a tremendous amount of supply of those higher tech units. So it's a lot of buffering for these tanks. But he's trying to make that move out. Like you said, if you do, if you're going for this traditional mech style, your vulnerability is typically going to be in the air. It's going to be broodlords. Broodlords absolutely feast against tank-based mech or swarm hosts if the Terran player gets caught off guard. But for Cure, he goes out to make this play. There's nothing here that can actually zone away the viper stuff. So I, I think if you're a Shin, you just want to grab just joint these tanks one by one into the into the road hydra there's there's nothing here to deal with this at all i mean these hellbats the hellions fight really hard nate uh, that yes the tanks are getting moved forward pushing, and forward pushing down i guess is one is one way to deal with that i just i was just it's just a tough it's just such a weird spot i feel like he's so he's so vulnerable and the brood lords are on the way out too i think he had like one thor made i think it was, yeah, he's got no no thor is on the way but he does have a lot of tech left he has this ability to transition to thor's if he needs to and the wild thing about this setup, you're going to Broodlords this quickly. You can be vulnerable to the Terran player just 
splitting their tanks all over the place. And you, yeah, you're like, okay, great. I got a bunch of broods, but tank hit squads are doing a ton of stuff. And now and, Thor starts. There, so there we go. There you go. Okay, so Broodlords are out. Absolutely. Kira's going to have to back up a little bit. Thor, four Thors on the way. Vikings getting added in. Let's take stock about what exactly he got. He's lost a bunch of tanks. He's lost, uh, there we go. He's lost six tanks. He does get a base. 21 drones go down. And this, you know, we talked about these broods, Nate. They're really good against tanks. They kind of suck against everything else. Oh, broodlords are absolute garbage against Thors. Like, really, really, the only thing that makes broodlords viable is the fact that there are some Terrans who will still build this many tanks. And that's that's basically it. Because a lot, a lot of other guys kind of go into the Thors earlier since, you know, they two shot at the Hydras and the Ravagers. They, they play ball against the Vipers just as well as many of the other forces. So now he's getting pushed up on his third. There's a little bit of a Hellback counterattack, but... He is going to have to wait for these Thors to come out. And I think if the Vipers or the rest of the units can do any kind of play against that, it would be nice. But it's very easy to overextend into this mech army and get wrecked. Thors have what, a whole extra range on the Broodlords. They kill them in like four or five shots. It's, it's, it's brutal. Yeah, 450 HP on top of it. I mean, they are just, or I guess 400 HP. They are beefy boys. And there's a reason I don't like them. They're a little bit too, that being said, uh, Shin's got a lot done, done here. He's killed off an extra base. They are good units. They are very good units. They're an excellent backbone to a mech army for all the reasons you mentioned. Basically, their only weakness is how slow they are. But the, the problem is, the, obviously, your tier 3 Zerg units are fast, too. So sometimes, I think, uh, when you see, like, the ability to overwhelm this force, because you lose a little bit of the AoE, sometimes you're like, oh, if I get a bunch of roaches on him, or, you know, the... the Tank, less tanks, harder to zone out against lurkers, but you brood lords aren't cheap. So for Shin, as long as they're alive and he's kind of maxed out like this, it's like what what else can he actually build to help with this? The blinding clouds, maybe a little bit, but he has so few broods as it is. I almost almost pulling them in is gonna cause the brood lords to die even faster in a way. So he does get the blinding cloud on the tanks. I think that's the clutch play because now the hydras can help clean up a little bit. But this is still a lot of very high HP units, like you were mentioning, pushing across for cure. I think as long as he can protect a few of these tanks with the Thors, it's, it's just going to go from bad to worse. Shin has to get on top of this. He cannot allow Kyr to take this high ground position against him. But he's he's running out of money. He's going to send out some Lings. One one last little bit bit of uh, Ling Roach in the production tab to try and try and stop this. But that's five Thors. I mean, he's like he's got one Hellbat, and that's not a lot. So actually, zero Hellbats now. And Ling's getting on top of the Thors. Yeah, Thor's are beefy. They got a lot of armor. They got a lot of damage. But you get a bunch of links on top of them. Hydras as well. This is the worst case scenario for a Thor. They they want to hide. They want to attack like high HP. They want to kill. Maybe yeah. ultras can be a problem. They want to kill broods. They want to have something to sit in front of them so the Hydras and the links can't just surround and kill off. And at the end of the day, Shin holds on. He lost this base, but he's been able to retake it. He got a decent amount of workers on the other side. But if you take a look at this, the game just kind of stabilizes. Yeah, I mean, I think that everything was going really well for Cure up until the point where he basically tried to rally. Like, you can't, you can't do, <laughs> you're not parade pushing with mech. Like, five Thors, incredibly powerful. Five Thors on their own with no support against a myriad of, you know, re reasonably inexpensive Ling Roach with some Hydra support. Then the Thors look silly. You, you put three Hellbats in there and maybe the whole entire thing looks different. So, I like what you're saying, by the way. If, if the army does turn into a crazy composition of Thors, then you lose, again, some of that ability to deal with those those big heavy hitting units like the Ooh. Ultras. And if you get caught off guard in the open field, that can be huge. But Cure is maintaining a very sizable siege tank count, regardless of what he sees. And the Swarm Host transition this late is, uh, this, is a, this is a gutsy move, but I'll, I'm just gonna go back and say, if, if, he, if you blindside your opponent, he goes in, snipes that natural or takes the third or somehow gets a big volley on the army, then, then I love it from him. Yeah, so as we look at what's happening right now, there are three Hellbats on the map. There's not a lot. Hi Roach Hydra's going to find its way into the third base. Against a bunch of Swarm Hosts, it, yeah, they're very much a mid-game comp. They're very much a tempo comp. It's orbital goes down. But you do need a bunch of Hellbats to deal with the Locust. If you got the Hellbats there, you're great. Otherwise, the tanks are going to kill themselves. Locusts get on top in that dead zone. They knock things down. So this game's getting weird, Nate. We got the third base. It's dead. It was taken down. Roach Hydra's gonna have to retreat back home. And now here comes the Locust. They got about, what is that, 30 Locusts or so, 28 Locusts trying to dive on top of every, everything. The Hellbats are well positioned, but the Blinding Cloud means they can't Great defend everything. Cloud. Well played there, Shin. He should wipe the floor with this, even as Kira was prepared. 
there's some pretty you know we talk about we talk about trad mech we talk about traditional mech and i think there's some there's some pretty big big keys to how that play style is supposed to work because um one thing i want to know is that ghost production has started so this is no longer regular mech this is now officially spooky mech okay please make a record in the in the jury whatever whatever logs we're taking of this tournament it has happened um but you're trip you don't want to really move out unless you have everything like when you make that big push you're kind of you're kind of inviting your opponent to base trade you because of how unstoppable your army is so now he, he loses one full army and then the swarm hosts show themselves like you would think the opportunity cost of supply and resources like he just wouldn't be able to get enough but he lands that swarm host wave on the blinding clouded mech and now now he can actually snowball off of it a bit and that allows shin even without a crazy amount of extra bases he can start to build up a bit of a bank but that being said i'm locust head to head if if cure can get together a good sizable 180 plus supply army then the locusts generally generally aren't that good against a full-fledged fighting force yeah it's a little bit dicey to have these roach hydra attack i understand why you're like i just gotta keep this army down i'm gonna keep trading it's gonna be fine i've knocked out so much of cure's economy uh but realistically and this is actually gonna work out because the locusts re-arrive but realistically that planetary there was another orbital right there so it's able to mine again cure's got this bottom side base but I think Shin's done enough, Nate. I think he has killed enough of this mech with the Swarmos and everything else that it's... I mean, I like the Vikings here. They're going to do a good job of knocking these Vipers you're, down, even with Parabon. You're eating, eating the Vikings is a good play. And for yeah. every, any Viper kills, any Viper kills are super, super important. But I have to agree with you. Like, Cure is just going to have a hard time maxing out because, yes, he has relanded that top center base, but he's playing mech. He needs gas. He doesn't have it there. He has that bottom left base, but he's playing mech. He needs gas. He doesn't have it there. He's also building ghosts, which are uh, that's 125 gas each, right? So you think about it, that's the cost of a siege tank. So what is he making? Ghosts and SCVs, nothing else. This, this is what happens. He takes that fight in the Northeast, that orbital command gets popped, not even saved, and he's dislodged from the West side. So really, we take a look at his income and he's, he's, he's hurting quite a bit resource-wise. He's got one more big army, but if this gets jumped on, if he gets hit with a full locust wave, then I, then I start to get real nervous. So Nate, I just want to make sure that I understand what you're saying here. Uh, Cure's playing mech, and therefore he needs gas, and he doesn't have yes. gas. Yes, Vespine gas. When you are, when your whole strategy revolves around vehicles, you need fuel. Okay, this is this is a concept that transcends StarCraft space and time. Even the cavemen knew you had to put something in the fire to keep it going. Well, I actually, I've never thought about it like that. You're like, oh, Vespine is just what I used to make things, but yeah, I guess it would power a Thor. I just assume, I just assume the Thors just run on straight Vespine, right? Why not? I mean, look, uh, my, head, my head, my head cannon is, I go pretty deep with this stuff. I mean, in fairness, like we're, we're getting into EV territory now. Why not? This is in the future. Yeah. Like, do you really Can need? I get a skin with giant solar panels on my Thor's arms? Why not? Why has this not happened yet? Thank you. I'm just, I'm just glad somebody sees me here. They should be free. That's what, that's what I'm hearing is, uh. I want, I want hydrogen cell powered Thors. Screw it. Hydra cell Give powered Thors? Give me everything. Give me an option for AC and DC current Thors. All right, give me every every possible choice. Oh, well, isn't that just Splash versus high impact payload Thors? You, you, I think you got me there. I think you got me there. <laughs> this is a bit of a scary timing though, because the Locusts don't have, or the Swarmhosts don't have their Locust power available in this siege up. Do we have any Vipers on the field? We got one. I don't know where it is at the time being, but that does not cover this amount of tanks. So even as Cure is in a horrible spot, base is nothing. This death push coming out of him. Not like Shin's got a lot of money. Uh, not, not at all, mate. Oh, and it's, it's, again, it's very awkward because some of those specialist units that he's relying on. Yeah, the ghost. He's got ghosts with his mech, so he gets a snipe on it. The Thoris helps zone against it. And weirdly enough, if these ghosts even can pepper a little bit against the Locust, they do the bonus damage. But it looks like with that surround, he is going to collapse onto Cure's army. And how many mech forces can you lose and be able to continue to keep throwing it at him uh, again? Talking about how you play regular mech styles, you're usually chilling until you're at least 160 supply. And if they go swarm host by the time you get 160, then you try to move out. And honestly, you kind of want that base trade. But otherwise, you need 200 supply. You need to make a methodical move out. Playing these scrappy all over the place uh, fights when your opponent has swarm host just means every tiny pack of units they run into, they're not going to be able to trade against. Cure, this is the downside of playing mech. He's trying to spread himself out. He's trying to be everywhere at once, but that's not really what you do with tanks and hellbats. They're, they're very strong when they're together and can fight the full force, but he's been, I mean, that's just the consequence of what has happened in this game, right? And he's hes toughing it out. He's sticking it out, but it's, uh, it's hard to see a path forward for him here 
that said, Shin still doesn't have as much that much money either because of that big push he had to deal with earlier too. You know, Nate, I actually don't hate Kyr's position in this game. Shin is broke as hell. He just needs to keep it together. He needs to keep all these units together and, and avoid that surround. Yeah. I, so more so, I, if you're broke, right, if you are really lacking in the money like Shin is, getting these units that are for it, they're not free, right? You have you buy them with time. But getting these units, getting these more swarmos on the map like, against what your opponent is, that's a good way to try to maximize the amount of money that you have. But I, there are so many Hellbats in this army right now. The tanks are seized. So in Dead Zone, Hellbat, you're going to get like one tank, maybe a second. And now there are 40 seconds where Kier can push because what are we looking at? This is this is 14 swarmos. This is so much of this army. And now Shin's going to lose what is effectively his final remaining base he's got a little bit of money here on this this bottom middle side but this is the last true mining base that he had and here the one he's been able to take he's been mulling the hell out of it but this is fresh so I'll, I, yeah losing a bunch of mech armies doesn't feel great Nate. but given the all the damage the economic damage that cure has been able to get kind of feels like he's in a great spot this game yeah, it got super messy. I it, like really for Shin, it's the it's the efficiency of the swarm host that keeps him in, keeps him in it because the, defending these bases is really hard. And as long as Kier can get his army somewhat reasonably close to where those are, then he can do a lot. But blinding clouds do hit the tanks and the hellbats. Locust wave drops on top and. Again, it's, it's hard because Shin doesn't have much money, but a lot of what he's trading no longer costs money. Like he's, like he bought stock 10 years ago and he's just paying all his expenses with the dividends. That's, that's what the swarm hosts are. But if, you know, if the climate changes and you have, you lower the expectations and they're not putting out as much, then, then you start to run into a concern there. It's not, not a lot of other capital for him to work with in this position. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm looking at this as well. And those, those blinding clouds were fantastic, but it looks like here got his Hellbats forward enough that they they soaked all the shots and you should have been fine but even still supply plummets for cure and part of that is of course that he wasn't mining from this one base that he has so it was lifted you're, you lose out of money just a little bit and now we got another attack right so this this is the problem tanks are a little bit better spread this time but that also means that friendly fire can kill them off that much more the hellbats are not there and as much as i'm saying i kind of like the spot for cure he's been able to shut down the last mining base these broodlords or not these broodlords these swarm hosts were just a brilliant move from shin in this game and the end of things even with the ghosts running away and the scv is trying to form a little bit of a citizen's arrest feels like shin i, I think i said this about 10 minutes ago but feels like shin has finally done it what a game one that again we're, we're we're looking at a best of five here we start with a nice 23 minute game one and I, I'm just gonna call. I'm just gonna harken back to what I said earlier. But playing mech is it's all about yeah. patience. There's there's a direct contrast with the traditional play styles of go go go, pedal to the metal. When you're playing mech, the idea is that your win condition is later in the game when you have an army that's more or less unstoppable. Like you have a bunch of Thors and tanks and Hellions supported by ghosts. Like if he actually had ever gotten to that army maxed out at any point. I'm terrified. I'm terrified for Shin, right? But instead, he had all these SCVs. He tried to move out because he, he did max out, quote unquote, reasonably fast. But he had a lot of SCVs and a lot of Hellions and tanks. And yeah, the Broodlords, they eat that first army. And then the Swarm Host knock down his base while the top base gets sniped. And all of a sudden, you're trying to expand to either end of the map at the same time. And you've got mech, which is just, it's just not conducive to that play style. So he, he trades probably more than he needs to. And when you've, again, when you've got swarm hosts, I generally don't like them against those maxed out armies. But when your opponent is willing to trade and spread out those mech forces, that's really where the swarm hosts are going to give you the most value. Yeah. And by the way, Nate, I'm, we're not going to spoil it because again, it's, it's, it results a little bit too soon, but uh, I just saw an incredible result um, from another part of the bracket. That uh, I think is going to excite a lot of people. So that's insane. It's a great day. We're going to have the playoffs after this. Very excited for that. But again, to get into the playoffs, you got to get through this stage. And for now, that's a Shin. That's a Zerg player looking up 1-0 on Cure. And we move to what is perhaps the weirdest map in the pool. Dynasty, map two. Let's see. Can Cure tie it up? We're right ready. In the upper right, in the blue, down a game in this series. Multiple times looking pretty good with his mech play, but just wasn't quite there. It's Cure. And facing off against him is the red Zerg player in the bottom left. I just, just gotta give gotta give props to him. That's not an easy game or opponent to come out on top of. He is Shin. 
you know those those channel point bets you looking back you see and you see where chat is looking who they're cheering for and there's obviously a lot of confidence for cure not just because he's obviously a good player but anybody who tunes into online tournaments he's just a name you're very familiar with he's just one of those guys that seeks out every opportunity to improve to practice against people and i won't lie definitely a surprise to see the mech come out of him um i liked what you mentioned about the fast blue flame because at least it seemed like shin was going for this greedy style that would give himself a lot of zerglings so it was like maybe a soft counter in terms of the opening he got onto four bases so easily and that's that's really what kind of blows my mind is i'm like if you're a mech player you get on four bases without taking any kind of economic harassment i don't know i feel like from that position it, it should be a little bit harder to lose like the whole the whole point is that it's tough to get up to that base count with the slow army so uh, I, I do expect Cura to shift back into something more traditional, less less traditional mech, though. Yeah, that's fair, but uh, I don't think we're going to have to talk about mech, traditional or non-traditional in this game, because we saw this build early on. I don't know if it was... Sh no, it was Lambo that did it. No, it maybe shouldn't. Anyway, we saw this happen in the last two days where this is a Roach Ravager timing. 100%. This is a Roach Ravager timing. You take the gas like this, we should see, we should see a Roach Warren go down soon. This is too hard to defend there we go there's the roach warren going yeah, on. so nice like call, nice call if you don't if you take this base and specifically if you take the base on this side of the map it is far far too hard to defend once the terran gets going so now the question nate does cure know that this is going to happen you've got to assume that something's going to happen there's the reaper is in the main base and he gets a drone actually maybe even going to get a second one having to build a gas fort but at the very least sees the roach warren gets a drone knows that well there's not, not anything on the low ground natural that probably and he has okay he knows exactly what's happening now he sees the creep cure you know what's happening how do you choose to defend yeah right it's like yeah it's like you killing one drone would normally be a big deal but getting the ones on the gold those those are the ones that are going to power this i think what's I, I was gonna say we won't see the mech for sure because he got the second barracks right stim is on the way and i if he has the awareness of this i think denying the defense of the gold mineral line that's hard that's really hard if they poke from the other side with like ravagers or whatever but he is getting the bunker and he could make a marauder he has it he has a tech lab barracks he's still making marines marauders are not cheap i get it but they actually are cheap so you know just one in the bunker would help a tremendous amount against the roach ling flood or whatever but there are lings there is link speed so if it's ravager ling then then marauders don't really do that much for you so uh by the way i i, I love the, the the wisdom of the nathanius uh, marauders aren't cheap but they are actually cheap all bio is... units all bio units are dirt cheap the only thing that makes them expensive is how fast they build you know it's like uh, it's it's like one of those paradoxes or whatever and yeah, and look, I'm not judging. Like, it's true on both sides. Yeah, they, they, they cost gas. They can be expensive, but also, I mean, the context of building like a, a cycle. It's kind of like something. how making one worker at a time is one of the most expensive production cycles that you run in the game. But it doesn't feel that way because it's only 50 minerals. Anyway, top uh, top bunker gets smacked down a little bit. One depot is down. So the Ling Flood, I, I think, is going to come in. Yeah, so when we saw this happen earlier, it didn't work because, well, we saw the the Overlord go down very quickly. Shin has done a much better job of defending that. Even still, Ling showing up right here. Well, they are going to show up into the third base, and that does make life a little bit more difficult, even though Cure technically has two bases. He's only mining from one. Ling's dive on top of the Cyclone as well, and that gives actually a lot more power to the Ravagers on this side. These, the Cyclones are your ultimate answer, right? Although, even as I say that, uh, Nate has a ton of Marines here. Yeah, Stim is just about to finish, and these it's Ravagers off creep. This is exactly the kind of situation where this this build falls off super hard. So he wants to kind of do this this flood. And if I was gonna say one thing that I, I I love with this play, it's if the gold base, right? The Ravager from the other side, it's just super tilting. If you don't have something to deal with that early, it's so annoying. But any Roach based composition is gonna limit your anti air capabilities and also your tech. So the lair maybe almost halfway done now he's got the third but still needs to saturate it and of course we know there's a timer on the gold base but if you're cure now you are into your bio setup really the only thing he's missing is at some point he's going to want to get that third command center and some engineering bays but yeah. otherwise he has what he needs to play bio and he's so he's ready to already go into his composition and this map all of a sudden gets very awkward for shin because i don't think he got enough done you kill off a couple no. army units you deny money it's not enough and look, look at this base setup. So yes, maybe eventually links can kind of filter through once these mineral fields go down, but this map, and we saw this happen in Lambo versus uh, Lambo versus Spirit actually, where you know, the yeah. game goes in the mid game, it 
getting defending all the bases on this map as a zerg player especially if you're playing roaches which are just not the mobile units that you need it's so hard to defend all your bases so yeah shin goes for the timing doesn't really get enough done and now here stimmed bio combat shields no he no he is no plus one but stim bio combat shields this is already a pretty tough road to hoe for shin yeah he, he, he again you want to drone up behind this because if you immediately make more fighting units then you're just not recovering from your own attack right that didn't deal enough damage but the army dies anyway all the gold base drones just up up for grabs here and that's that's an unbelievably brutal drop off for the income now and that's gonna that's gonna give everything cure needs yeah gg is called and not not a surprising result there i think for cure what what, what is the the game winning move there is just kind of getting the read on what's happening build build the bunker and that link flood is just it's just hard to do a build like that up that small main base ramp you know it's almost like losing the supply depot was a bit of a bait he's like yes run he's like, yeah, come in come in you did it you did it he's like don't wait for the rest of your links come in now come in now yeah and it's like well you, you get handled i think part of it is first of all he recognized that we got a bunker up in time also he went for a 2 one, one and you have, I know you mentioned Marauders. Yeah, that second nice, Rax, but... I think that second Rax helped a lot. Good point, good point. Yeah, just let him, also, not just the extra Rax, right, because it's a bunch of Marines, but Stim was done so quickly. So the moment that it's like, okay, generally we're maybe round two of this timing might happen. You Stim down the ramp, you kill all the Ravagers, and then, I mean, that's 500 gas or something that's been, that's been spent. That's very hard for Shin to come back from. Yeah, uh, well, we are tied up. So, I mean, Shin did a great job of handling that uh, maybe less common type of strategy that we get to see at this level in the mech build in the first game. But I think when we talk about why it's kind of interesting to have these maps and, and make these changes, it's that we want to kind of see different types of games. So mm -hmm. it, it, having a base that you can take like that enables that strategy to even even exist viably for Zerg. Doing that on a regular base or a regular expand, you're just going to have less and it's going to come later. So it's cool to see that opportunity, but it also, again, it can kind of create that trap for the player where they say, I'm going to take the gold base and do this build, but you know, Cure, that's something he's going to see a lot because he's also playing the game. He's also practicing. He's studying his opponents. That he is. And now, effectively, we're in a best of three. So in the upper right for Team Liquid in the blue, it's Cure. And his opponent in the bottom left as the red Zerg player, he is Shin. Okay, I just, I need to get something off my chest, Bayo. Um, okay, you don't shoot. have to forgive me. You don't have to forgive me. I don't mean anything ill by this, but I, I get, I, I eat so much of that Shin Ramyun ramen. <laughs> I'm, I'm so addicted to it. And I just keep, I just keep thinking about a hot, I have some in my, in my pantry. I'm probably going to have some after we're done casting today now. That'll be good for the throat too, but I just, I can't stop. I can't stop thinking about it. I just, I just had to apologize for that. So I had to get that off my chest and yeah. holding it in. That's been burning a hole in my chest for like, it, Okay, let's be I clear. Love, I love Shin Ramyun, and you know what? I'm going to say I love Shin. He's great, great guy. Great, picked a great name. I'm not sure if it has any other meaning, but I just, you know, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it's his that's last all. name. <laughs> his name is Shin Yum. There you go. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, so that's don't worry, Nate. That's been burning a hole in my chest too. And I would like to clarify that what I mean by that is that I've been it's been trying to burst out of me. Not that I have heartburn. I think this is important to point out when we talk about like spicy alien food. style. Yeah, yeah, more like alien style, less heartburn. Mm. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I mean, <laughs> Zerg players are alien or. Uh, sorry, Zerg are aliens. You'd be more <laughs> accurate. You could just say you're like you got turned into an infested Terran. Right? There we go. So you, you know, there you go. You play Zerg. I mean, it, it checks out. I'm gonna head over to the venue after this and just put on my Admiral Stoikov uh, <laughs> uniform and. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what's that? Uh, is there like grape jelly everywhere? It's like, no, I'm just spreading some creep. You know, don't mind me, right? Just, it's just one of those things I do. <laughs> what a cut. <laughs> What a just, you know, just super like, casual just super casually it's just, just like have, yeah you just have jars of grape jelly with you like <laughs> spread this on the floor. you know some people they, they leave trails of breadcrumbs but at least when this one goes bad there's still some kind of stuff you can follow i don't know anyway anyway the scv is patrolling outside the third base of where where he would expect shin to potentially go to and out of cure We've got, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty straight up opening so far, right? Nothing super crazy to report back. We go back to a more normal map, right? The gold, not, uh, not something that typically comes into play super early here as it's very easy to check if your opponent has gone for it with the, the mineral patches from that third. Yeah, not, 
not in this matchup. Shin loves to go for the gold base, much like Dark does against Protoss players. That actually happens very often, but yeah, no, it is far, far too easy to punish in, in TBZ. So for now, the Reaper, okay, so he's going to try to deny this third base as much as he can. It's already about three supply behind. Generally, you want to get it at 32. But with the Reaper damage, it's taken from the Queen. It's annoying, but oh, oh, yeah, here we go. Gets him a little bit longer. Now you got to back up, but hey, anything you can do to slow the Zerg player down, you're pretty happy about it as Cure. And behind this, what do we got? It's one 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 quick third base it's a society it's a great big macro map this shouldn't surprise anyone nate but the question is do we get those third and fourth gas very quickly does this turn into mech right it's not a question that i would have brought up myself at any point in probably this these two days that we were going to cast together bayo i just don't expect it i just didn't expect to see it I, 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 as you know, is not a super big surprise. I think that when you execute uh, a well thought out strategy and you have specific goals and targets that you're aiming for with this type of style, I do think it is crazy strong. And a lot of people underestimate it because it's not that popular. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have thought we would see it, but I guess I'm just gonna have to keep my eyes open for that now for the rest of the series from Kier, because we have, we have that Banshee again. Notice this time he doesn't start the cloak in view of the Overlord. He probably wants him to think it's like, oh, I'm going Viking first this time, but because he did go Viking first before, but not, not this time. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes for that. Meanwhile, Shin, it's not that big of a deal. Probably, he's probably just gonna get roaches, but he has hidden the roach horn a little bit. That is behind the mineral line and it, granted, these are most likely defensive roaches. We're on 43 drones. That's not like any standard roach based timing, but he has he is denying a little bit of vision on Kira to try to figure out exactly what's happening. So second Banshee on the way, speed done, barrack or uh, excuse me, factory going over, but the barracks going down. So this does mean, I don't know. Uh, Nate, do you feel like being Apollo? Do you feel like calling the additional barracks into mech? Is that is that what's going to happen? Are we? No, no, you know, the, the coolest, the coolest thing, the coolest thing about Sean was that he didn't, he didn't try, right? He just, he just had that unbelievable level of swagger, but <laughs> at the same time, it's also like, you, you know, there's a very, there's a very tight range of like where the British accent goes from being like, oh, you know, it kind of sounds like it's more regional or it sounds really handsome and you don't want to overdo it, right? On some level. And Sean just kind of had that perfect balance. Like everything he said, it just, it's like he's whispering sweet nothings to you, so. I uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even dare to suggest I would be capable of, of making an equivalent move even in my prime. Nah, I think you, Nate. We've seen you in the broadcast. I think you're in your prime right now. At least um, telling me that I should go. We're in Texas, so I should go get a prime rib. That is falling on its face. That's Let's true. talk about you the video game. You could get that at the barbecue place. You could there get it, you could get that at your Texas barbecue. It's a good point. The lair is finishing up. Ling speed is only just starting. So we've seen this a little bit. Shin, he likes he likes the queens for the opener. Uh, he's he's going up to eight, uh, but he's he's in a position where he can kind of defend and he's just mostly playing around these banshees, right? So he doesn't need to be out there, but he still is going to end up wanting to be. And he also starts up one one, so not as much of a focus this time on the on the roach or the ravager, perhaps. Yeah, what well, I'm tracking here. So this is a, this style is defensive roaches you get roaches to keep yourself safe against early stuff and then you get bio or you get a melee afterwards because it's just it's better as the bases go bigger and it's easier to defend but the question i was going to ask is how quickly do we get our infestation bit how quickly do we get our hive because hey that, that's what this enables and it's going to be a six minute infestation it's shane is going up the hive insanely fast and this is a build that we saw sterile use back in masters coliseum about a year ago at this point when he was first debuted and when he did it well his hive was done at like seven minutes ultras were popping on the field at 8 15 and he smashed yeah. Maru on neo humanity i we're not quite that fast shin is not quite that on top of things although he could start his hive before seven minutes if he wanted to and there it is i i couldn't agree with you more it's a really it's a really good style because a lot of a lot of terrans will take that that perspective of okay my opponent is going to kind of macro up they're going to build a lot of queens I, they're going to focus on keeping their units at home to defend what i'm going to do so the terran might say to themselves okay well, well let's just get up to this army so that he can't have enough ling bane and make this attack but when you get to the hive fast enough if you if it works out and you can get like that that surprise ultra etc while they're trying to push on to creep then the game just gets weird because they have that kind of catch-up ability with anabolic synthesis but it takes a lot of time to get those upgrades so shin is still gonna have to put in some work here to get to that hive tech we're talking about and it's gonna begin with defending right here at this gold base i think he's got enough i mean there's a lot of roaches a lot of ravagers one one's gonna be done very soon so 
even though the Terran has this timing, 1-1's one, done. Well, actually, as I say, that reinforcement starts starting to arrive, and this looks a little bit dicier. I mean, even if you have to keep the gold base away, but for now, Biles are going to try to land again on Medivac, but not really on the Marines. And as the Lings continue to fall down here, Roach, though, they're going to join the fray just a little bit further forward. Biles on the tanks, and yeah, absolutely, Shin's got enough to handle this. Maybe it's a trade, certainly, but the base stays alive. His hive is now done. 2-2 two, two on the way, Roach speed. And we should start to see that's, that hive tech. That's the important that thing. That is... I think I think you called it you called it perfectly and he makes he makes the defense it's so nice like even with this lower tech versus like a somewhat more developed Terran army Kira is not doing that that huge oh I'm, I'm seven racks all in I'm skipping everything no he's getting his 2-2 the fourth command center's building on location and he's got all these other things going on so it's not that huge dedicated push to just shove everything off and now by the next time he goes for that attack Maybe the Ultras won't be ready yet, but the Vipers will. We have two on the way. Two, two is coming. Bane links. The Ultraless Cavern is on the way, but remember, guys, we need we need two upgrades for those bad boys to be, you know, for them for them to to reach their adult uh, their adult state or whatever. That is true, but realistically, even Chitinus played in Ultras with, with at plus least two on armor. creep. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Chitinus would be really good defensively, but for for, for everything they want, yeah, I think the Ultra it just takes a little bit of time. That it does, but for now, I mean, this quadrum is, is doomed. Oh. <laughs> well, no, sorry. He tries, he tries to tries to land the biles on it, but uh, I mean, the other the other side of this too is while he is on his way to the vipers, which can try to pull stuff or parabomb, he he, he still doesn't have that much anti air. No, he really doesn't. And when I say doomed, I mean I didn't think it was going to get a lot in that base, but he's just going to try to target the hive. He's he, oh no way, he's not going to get the hive here. But he's he kites away. It's a bunch of lings going down. Bailings don't have speed, so I mean, what are you going to do with that one? You force him away. Hey, for a second there, I thought Kira was going to get the hive. It's like, no way he, pull, he pulls that rabbit out of a hat. Yeah, it's, it's like such a hard call to make because if he steps forward enough for the, the spawning pool, denying Adrenal, right, to me, would be maybe the, the biggest value move there or getting the, the Ultraless Cavern, but it's tucked a little too far back, I think. So he doesn't want to risk the Spore Crawler hitting it or getting abducted being too far in. So that hive it is it is the highest hp building in the game so tragically it does take a little more time to snipe than everything else and he kind of bites on it a little bit but cure does get that drop back in he's going to try to finish it with just these eight marines there are some lings and bane bane ling speed actually is still on the way with adrenal so they're going to line up but it's a little bit little bit tricky for him to actually make the dive onto these units even on creep that he was wanting that it is and meanwhile this attack from the front from cure it's nice slow it's steady it's measured but the question is, okay, so we know what's happening. The Hive is done. Cure should understand that Ultras are going to be on the field. But I, we talk about timings. We talk about everything else. Kindness plating is only halfway done, Nate. The, these Ultras are powerful. They're 500 HP, 450 HP of beef. But they don't have that additional armor that makes them so hard for Marines to take down. So Cure, he's been pretty happy for now to go and sit on the map and knock a lot of creep spread down and get damage done with this drop before the Vipers knock it down. But at the end of the day, he is going to have to back up here because Kite is plating everything else he is ready. Ultras, Lings, Banes running on the other side of the map. And now Cure, he's got to bat down the hatches here. Ghosts are not ready. And this is the timing Shin's been building up for for the entire game. Yeah, he's got the blinding clouds available. He immediately gets three of the tanks. Some of the Marines are going to get caught up in that as well. Some of the other tanks trying to stagger in the back. One of them into a blinding cloud. And now the Ultras get on top and... This is the beauty of the style. Like you said, it was a it was a little bit of a game, but you're trying to get that hive as fast as you can. There is some counterattacks though. Drop is in the natural. He has a little bit of a push. Double drop hitting the south expansion. Drones are on the way out, but Cure's natural is now where Shin has relocated. But I think the biggest thing is he needs to get into the main base, right? You, if you're base, if you're in a situation where you might be base trading the Terran player, they're gonna if they hunker down in that main, it can be a very dicey spot. He has a lot of lings though. He's actually gonna be able to get some of those marines out of the natural. He's buying himself some space, but but Bayamol, another hatchery is going to get popped. There goes the third. Yeah, it's really only that one. Actually, there's there's only one mining base for Shin right now. He has got to win with this or just go home. And the Liberator, this last second Liberator on the high ground means the Ultras cannot find themselves there. And the problem on top of everything, Cure lifted his base. He's a Terran player. While Shin lost bases, Cure lost STVs. You don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose supply. Absolutely. But you can drop the mules. You have the bases yeah. there. You can the moment the aggression's done, you can drop those bases back down, make something happen. And now Shin, I, this was a power. I thought he, I thought Shin had killed Cure. I thought Cure was dead. But Cure with those those ideas to go just across the map, drop things. It's put him in an incredible spot in this game.
Yeah, I, 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 it's kind of stunning too because it felt like some of those plays, those pushes where he went in, he was even surprised that he was like, okay, he has a lot of units here, but so they're missing a couple of upgrades. Like he's trying to do maybe, maybe if we if we think backwards a little bit of this game, a retrospective for Shin, just he did go for a lot at once. And that was the gamble. He defended the first push. The second one looked a little bit, a little bit tougher, but I think not having that Bane speed, not being able to try and go out onto that small, it wasn't that big of an army outside where that gold was, but not having everything lined up to go for it at that time really made things difficult for him. But now he has, he has all of those upgrades. He just needs to get back to that economic position where he can build the units that can use them. And that's, that's just tough because he's retaken two of his previous expansions right now and he still hasn't even restarted his natural. Yeah, that's a, that's a big problem. So meanwhile, here on the other side, he's got four bases fully set, set up. He's got liberators done, mech armor on the way just to make everything that much tankier, drilling claws because he understands that this is not a world where more ultras can be easily afforded. So it's going to be lings and banes and, and well, lings, right? And I don't know of a better unit uh, that handles everything than well, for uh, handles a bunch of lings than Widowmines, right? Just, you have to split against it. There's this 3-3 three, three file that's now here. And I mean, you put yourself behind a corner like this. And what exactly? Eventually, this gets cleaned up, but not before the trades again for Procure. They get better and better. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest part about this is like for Shin, he wants to get more of what he has. And he and for him, he's like trying to reach a tipping point where he can overwhelm Cure. But for Cure, he's like, okay, ghosts counter all of this. And I know that you're not in a position to really get like investors with this. You're trying to just get a lot of, you're not trying to get more of the beef as you put it. So he feels comfortable moving out on the map. He's got liberators to back him up. There's very, there's no threat of getting hit with corruptors. The vipers are all off the field. There are a few investors now, but unless, you know, unless we're talking about some, some huge highlight play compilation, it's, it's they're going to be asked to, to make up for a lot of, a lot of this deficit. That they are. And again, this, I mean, this, this Venn diagram of death that Cure's got going for himself is just, it's such a significant problem. Hard to run, really hard to run through. So Ling's on the other side are going to try to make this counterattack happen, but Liberator keeps the mineral line alive. Reinforcements, for the most part, are going to clear this up. And I mean, a bunch of Ling's to not get a lot done as, as Shin loses another base. I love the idea. Like, getting Ultras down that quickly would have been incredible, but kind of plating was late. It was uh, about a minute later than it should have been, and that slowed down the timing by about a minute. And then, well, the window where Shin had this nearly unbeatable army was just not as wide as it should have been. And of course, Cure as well, running across the map with like seven medevacs worth of stuff, dropping down, killing every base was just miraculous. Now that's a good fungal. He's gonna get on top of the ghost, chaining him in as well. But the problem is, is there's just not enough there to take advantage of it. So even though Cure eats two of the juiciest fungals we've seen all day, it's not gonna be enough. Infestors are going to try to come from the east side again here. He defends the Ling run by back at his base. The rest of the Lings are going to try to flood out onto this. I think he's hoping to try to get the fungal onto the ghost so the Lings can clean them up. But the tanks are holding the back line very well. The snipes all come in. The fungal lands on the ghost, but they're going to be able to barely step out of the corrosive vial. And again, there's just not much to deal with the Liberators. GG is called. Cure goes up two to one. And I... I I don't think there's too much that, that we really missed there, right? It seemed like a pretty well thought out strategy by Shin. I'm gonna go up to Hive, I'm gonna get all my upgrades, and you know, now that you mention it, I really do think that first drop, with that big drop where he kind of tried to target the Hive, I don't think he even had Chitinus started yet. He was trying to deal with that, right? He was trying to deal with the siege up and the drop, and you're precisely right. That upgrade comes out a little bit late. When he first has his Ultralisks, the Chitinus is still really far, and, uh, never even was able to make it, I don't feel, think to that uh, ultralisk speed either. So it's just a very difficult position to play out of. Yeah, really hard. You, you, the entire point of this build is you, you're going to have, you're not going to have 3-3, three, three, but you're going to have 2-2, two, two, you're going to have Chitinous Plating, you're going to have like four or five ultras maybe, depending on how you've been able to spend money elsewhere. And you're hitting it like before 10, 9.30, 10 minutes, maybe a little bit earlier. The Terran's going to have maybe 1-1 one, one if you've been perfect otherwise, and depending on the build they go for, otherwise it's 2-2. Two, two. And without Liberators, without Ghosts, they cannot fight your army. It's just impossible. The Ultras are far, far too strong. So you yeah. sledgehammer them. You're trying to end the game with that. We saw that almost happen. Unfortunately, if you forget Kindness Plating, these Ultras, <laughs> instead of being plus four or four armor Ultras and Marines are doing like, what's it, two or three damage a shot. They got 450 HP. Now they're doing twice that. They're doing that much more. You actually can take them down. That's like once upon a time, chitinous plating used to be worse too. And it was, and it was like, but people with ultralisks, it was, well, when they have chitinous, 
Eh, they're, they're kind of, it's kind of like a Terran building with building armor. And when they don't have chitinous, it's kind of like just killing a building. And then you think to yourself, how many units in StarCraft, like armies deal with buildings pretty easily. They're just big damage soakers. And they've gotten a little bit, they've, they've gotten some changes, right? They got a little bit, they were on that slim fast diet. They got a little tinier. They came a, like, slightly more mobile, maybe. Um, you had us that, I think that minor cost reduction, but at the same time, they're still big and chonky. And unless you have those armor upgrades for them to really soak that damage, uh, units in StarCraft do a lot of damage. So that's, you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have everything lined up if you wanna win those fights. That is their blessing. That is their curse. You know, we talk about how time to kill may be a thing, may not be a thing. But for now, uh, Cure got a lot of bio. He can shred things very, very quickly. So, Nate, we got maybe one more game, hopefully two. We've had a lot of five game best of fives today. But we got at least one more. It's Amphion. It's a weird map. Let's see what our players have in store for us. Game four is here. And the upper left, his tournament life on the line in this knockout round three. He desperately wants to move on to playoffs, give himself that much closer to hitting the top four, getting that EWC qualifying spot. It's Shin. Yeah, but he's got to do it against this guy who has, I mean, we've, we've had things mixed up a little bit. We've already got a little bit of a mix up on the production tab now. So let's just say it in the bottom left, looking to punch his ticket to the next round. He is Cure. All right, Nate. I I don't think this is I don't think this is aggression coming out of Shin because I know you're pointing out, hey, this is a quick pool. I this is not aggression coming out of Shin. This is I'm down a game against a Korean Terran that is the Terran. Oh, he might he might be doing the build. Mm. What is the one the one that nobody's I, I I believe the build that must not be named right the one that we've never really seen lose on a big public uh, broadcast. Although it is the beast stream, it's possible that the two racks Reaper has less power uh here so we, we could keep that in mind perhaps but yeah he's that's, that's a good point to make he goes for the pool first but he's droning up he's not he's not making a ton of lings uh and and of course in the fast slightly faster queen timing can still be macro ish to to push the reaper away whenever it arrives yeah i think this is just this is safety this was like a fifth this is what was a 14 15 pool something like that just very safe making sure that you are if this is if this is a proxy two racks this proxy three racks you're gonna have enough stuff out you can go and have a couple lings on the other side of the map and maybe force the reaper to stay at home if you're lucky and the reaper doesn't stay home you know this is gonna happen because cure saw the lings running across you can maybe delay the natural a little bit but this is safety this is just making sure that cure or that cure doesn't go kill him with a cheap game he wants to have an opportunity to go and, and play the game that he wants to play because we saw in game one, Shin does have that ability to play these crazy long games, play well. It's just, it's been a little unfortunate in the last two. Yeah, some some things getting getting tough, right? It's it's like you, you look at the overall way the games go and the the gold base map, right? You can't you can't glean too much from that. He tried to do a build specific tailored to the map. And he tried to kind of just go for it regardless of what he was up against. I don't think you can you can fault him too much there. He tried to make the most of the situation that he was put in. But the first macro game, he does a great job of baiting the overextension by Cure when he plays out the mech style. Like, I really felt like Shin's level of patience was great. Remember, he gave up, like, the third or most of his natural, and he was still able to, to grind that out, like, seven or eight minutes longer to beat the mech. So we've seen we've seen him be able to really just power through some difficult situations but when it comes down to it seeing cure just go back to playing just straight up regular bio and getting in his face that is that is never going to be an easy thing to play against no it really isn't but uh there's a reason that shin's at this tournament shin has been peaking so so high in the last couple weeks he won his first ept korea in i think about 40 weeks uh, he won, what, it was like 228, and he had last one, no, it was 100 weeks, right? He last won in like 120, 138. So, he wins an EPT Korea over a bunch of really good players. He's been doing really well, pretty much since he got knocked out of the GSL, actually. And this is his time to show just how hard he's speaking, because, well, he was signed to Gaming Gladiators. He was signed to one of these teams that are not traditionally a StarCraft team, and let's be real, part of that is, is they want to get, they want to get access to StarCraft points for the team challenge for the Esports World Cup. He is so close. He's two best of fives away from qualifying into the Esports World Cup to justifying Gaming Gladiator signing him. And of course you have. They're going to be qualifiers, I think, uh, June, early July for 
the last couple slots but it, as hard as it is to hit top four here uh nate in dallas so there's still more slots available than like the one or two regional slots available for the, the online qualifiers that are happening in you know a month or so yeah the biggest the biggest thing about starcraft especially is that the, the talent is so condensed at the top level that you're talking about it's like oh yeah finish at the top of this event and qualify but a lot of us are not really mentioning that we're already in the back of our minds thinking about the players that are going to be some of them that'll be outside of that top four because somebody's going to probably make it into the top four of this event that is already qualified right it's not it's not it's not a surprise or rocket science really so that, that opportunity even if you don't quite get there getting close enough can still be enough uh for for some of these guys well, Nate, I think it's also important to point out as well. I think we can probably, it, the, the result is, is final enough at this point. We can talk about it. There is at least one player that has qualified for the Esports World Cup that is out of the tournament already. Clem won Atlanta. He qualified for Esports World Cup that way. And also, uh, he qualified through Katowice as well. And he is out. Hero 3 0 him. So there is at least one slot there in the top four that is unaccounted for that will go to potentially someone that has not already qualified. So, you know, there is awesome. that. That's the cool thing, right? Because every I, I think you see people step up their game because they recognize like, hey, some of these guys have already qualified. Mm -hmm. I feel like even though they want the money, I'm still playing for a little bit more than that because it's it's more than just, hey, I'm trying to get this placement. But if if somebody that's already qualified had squeaked in, of course, those are the kinds of things you're like, look, maybe if I if I get fifth place, am I going to hate it? No, but will there still potentially be a chance? Like these are all the different things. So I just... I, I think that's the coolest part. And as you said, of course, the, the team, the team factor of it for that for that event is just so big that these guys are all getting essentially talent scouted now, which is like a wild concept for a game. You know, we've played StarCraft two for almost 14 years now, and you've got teams looking for players that can that can lead them to success and lead them to victory on a global stage. You love to see it. Oh yeah. And uh, you talk about things I love to see as a as a fan of StarCraft, as a fan of good StarCraft. We got Mutaling Bane on the way here, game four. And first of all, this makes me happy again. I just Mutaling Bane is probably the purest distillation of really good StarCraft. On the other hand, this is not a style I think of when I think of shit. I, it's going to be Roaches, right? It's going to be kind of what he did that last game, what he's done er earlier in this series. He absolutely can play Mutaling Bane 100%. He's a very good Zerg player, but he's kind of playing against his image right now, in part because it's a good map for him. We talked about this in, in, the, in the Spirit series. Amphion can be a very good map for Mutaling Bane. But now the question is the bios across the map here. Even before the mutas are out, can you defend this fourth base? Yeah, he's got the Banshees poking the gas mining on the third as well. So that fourth that you're talking about, we see the drones there cooked. Nine total picked off. And that actually completely equalizes the worker count between the two of them, right as those mutas are building. And oftentimes that can become a tricky question. If you have enough banelings, he's going to just load up the Marines and leave everything else behind. I like that move by Cure, especially getting the fourth Banshee still trying to poke a little bit on the natural. But that, that delicate balance, by the way, before you make the mutas, good call. Shin had enough banelings, but that's always one of those things as a Zerg player you want to keep in mind like oh i'm gonna go into the mutas if you spend all your gas and you don't have any banelings and marines show up then you're in for a bad time i, I mean you say he had enough but he had enough banelings to clean it up after the damage was done he still lost nine workers he still lost his fourth base yeah, that window yeah it's true true and when you're playing this mutiling bane stop i mean you got to be careful these medevacs have to be careful here but you need if you're playing hydroling bane or ling bane or something you're fine with five or six gas you're you're okay Mutaling Bane really wants it. It wants as, kind of as much gas as possible because you're pumping gas into your upgrades, into the Mutas, into the Banelings, it, it, and you're trading a lot more. So it's not like, well, I got Roach Ravager, and some of this gets maintained over and over again. My gas heavy units get maintained. You're trading them out quite a bit, and that does mean that losing this fourth base is maybe a little bit more painful than, say, if he's playing Hydroling Bane or something like that. And by the way, Cure's multi pronging here. He's got a drop in the main base. He's got pressure on the right side as well. Mutas are going to deal with the drop in the main base, but maybe that means the right side undefended. Bailing for now. Target fire down there by Cure. And with the Widow Mines on the back side, target fire all but one. Last Bailing makes a great connection. Cure, he's trying to make something happen here, but he will be forced back. And that means the drop on the left side, I think it went down as well. That's the problem with dropping into Mutas. So all of a sudden here, it's a 20 supply gap in Shin's favor. 
It, he's he's kind of been brutalized a little bit by some of the air maneuvering over the course of the series So it's a really nice adjustment to see out of him and that heavy Ling style Yeah, the 2-2 is a little bit behind but he has the look at the mutas coming through This was actually really fun to see earlier today as well We had some other muta play from Lambo that was just really exciting to watch and I'm glad we do get to, I'm glad we get some version of a redux here today because watching marine marine mine medevac versus mutas I mean if it were up to me this this would be every, every game would be funneled towards this being the most most best way for everybody to play we love watching these games or at least i'll just biasly admit i love watching these kinds of games it's like you know i i will agree that in general like and th obviously this is eight years ago at this point but i will agree in general that legacy of the void is the best version of starcraft we've ever had it is far there are many improvements made over heart of the swarm but the one thing that does make it a little sad is again which is how the economy scales and and how things were changed and units were added and removed uh Mutaling Bane is not as viable in general as it once was. Man, this... Oh, no! This is going to be a dead Thor. Knocking down the missile turret to try to get his way out because he's trapped in the main base. What a mine's great, wow. sure. But even still... Oh, man. You would have loved to have the Muta. 300, 200. That's six supply. You're talking about six supply evaporating in the Protoss matchup, and here here it is just gone. That mm. Thor snatched up right as it completes. That's that's painful, too, because a lot of Terrans try to use that as the anchor to soak Baneling damage since, yeah, obviously, they're not cheap, so he's got a lot of Marines to supplement them, and that just makes those Banelings all the more enticing. And the wild thing about this as well is, like, the Thor had to go kill the Missile Turret because he was stuck in the main base. You could have just let the Mutas kill that and then you and the thor probably stays alive a little bit longer maybe something happens so it's just about the worst possible timing that cure could ever have found and now mutas they're looking for the sensor tower this terran player is trapped at home but he does have 3-3 on the way and nate you know you talk about this purest distillation of starcraft the best possible version of starcraft there is a very key timing that you talk about mutiling bane versus bio there's a break point that has always been true across the matchups and it's that 3-3 timing versus 2-2 two, two there for the Ling Bane. Mm -hmm. It's a massive deal. Yeah, this the window before that plus three finishes up for Cure is going to be massive since the hive is not even done. He can't quite start it. So big Ling Bane trying to come up the ramp off creep. A bold move, but he does manage to avoid the first mine shot on most of his units. He gets the planetary. A lot of the Marines are still up, but Shin just says, I'm going to take the base and I'm gonna dip. So not trying to force too much directly onto him. And that kind of plays into the methodology of this play style. You don't have to necessarily force it. You just need to frustrate your opponent into stepping onto creep against your massling Bane. He's got a hundred Zerglings building. The question is, how many Banes does he have to try and stop the follow -up? I mean, mate, I don't think that was the play at all. Banelings are gonna try to go now, but Mal Marauder is serving as a bit of a wall here moving forward off creep. That was so expensive. That was so insanely expensive. See, see just, just for the planetary, he didn't get almost any of the Marines there, isn't it? That's a, that's a huge, that's a huge amount of resources to toss to kill a base. Yeah, he killed like 13 Marines, and it was a hundred Lings going out, a bunch of Banelings going down. Now the problem is 3-3 is not done. There are no Banelings in this army right now, and yes, you had a timing cure, but now you stepped on creep just a little bit. It's a massive surround, and the Thor is gonna do what it can, but it's gonna get knocked down. The army of cure gets chased back to the extents of hell, and yes the supply is oh actually it's just remaxing but for a second the supply wasn't that bad the problem is it's all in production and here comes the zerg swarm fours now they're gonna get picked up they're gonna try to get saved but here shin's on nope. top of the rally at this point it's just so hard for cure to come back from this was a, just a it was just a great play by shin because the mm -hmm. most important thing to recognize here was that the, he was respecting the mutalisks too much mm -hmm. what does the terran normally build out of that factory if they're not making thors I think 99% of people would say tanks or widow mines, and then maybe um, very, very rarely nobody really mixes Hellions or Hellbats with Bio. But I would even I would even accept that in this situation. The, what I'm what I'm getting at, there's just a lot of units and not a lot of splash. There's not any splash in this army outside of a couple mines that barely squeak out at the end. And that huge swell of Ling Bane, even with that three three getting so close, like you said, it, it almost became an anti time. He steps a little too far forward, trying to counterattack, and Shin just, he's a completely in the driver's seat of this game now. He's, he's trying to mass Marines, but you're not going to just outproduce Zerg. You need those efficient trades. You need those tanks for those mines, and just, uh, wow, love to see it. Thank you, Shin, for giving us a nice little bit of Ling Bane. Um, I don't, I, I still, I'm still mildly puzzled by the huge, the huge investment to pop the planetary, but it ended up working out, so... He's, he's just some 300 IQ. That's what I'm yeah. going to say. You know, it's funny. I, I think that's important to point out. I, I was kind of looking at that fight around the fourth, and I'm like, okay, where's the splash? Where are the, where are the mines? Because that, 
it still got the planet. It was incredibly expensive. It was like a four thousand resources, four thousand minerals lost to a thousand worse in the gas. But without those, without the widow mines, it's like, well, yeah, you don't have anything. I, I'm with you. I, I, I don't. I feel like he transitioned into Thor's too quickly. But on the flip side, widow mines got worse. Their their splash radius went down. You, you can kind of see where the shot is going to go a little bit better. And I wonder how much of this is Cure making a mistake and just going into Thor's a little bit too quickly, maybe, or maybe not saying. Ideally, what you're, you're on is like double factory, so you have two Widow Mines and one Thor coming out of the map all the time, and maybe he kind of cut production on that. How much of that was just leaning into Thor's a little bit too quickly, and how much of that is him maybe believing that Widow Mines are not as good anymore? I I think that when we consider like from the early game perspective, right, the gas investment between the Banelings and the Mutas. That choice, that choice does get somewhat made ahead of time by Shin, though. For him to make the Bane Links to then push into that base, like he's thinking about how many mutas he can get away with, and maybe the Thors pushed him into the more heavy anti-ground earlier, but it's, it still felt very reactionary from him. Like, I, I, on some level, I feel like Cure did kind of bite that it was gonna be a lot of mutas mm -hmm. early, because he has, he has a lot of Marines, he can make turrets. A handful of mutas is never really that hard to deal with, and it's not uncommon for, historically anyway, Zergs to go mutas and then kind of do something else, but... Yeah, yeah, it was just a lot. It was just a lot that happened in that game, but I without without anything to deal with the splash. He got surrounded. The lings kind of went all the way around the army. No, he, like I, he, I, I again, it doesn't really ever make sense to have hellbats mixed into this type of army. It, it doesn't. But even even a few of those would have would have gone a long way. So just uh, just a tough spot to get put in. And, and like you said, he tried to save the Thor with the medevac. I think the medevac died with the Thor in it, so he never even got an opportunity. He never really got to drop it either. So. That's uh, that's just tough. That's just tough. Yeah, no, it's 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 a problem. Um, I you know I think also you, you say okay, maybe you don't add hellbats. Cure's got an eight racks build where he builds a bunch of hellbats and it's like this marine marauder hellbat eight racks. You kind of hit with two two and on all in. So it's definitely possible that that you can make something happen. But by the way, Nate, as this is this is absolutely our final game of the day. There's there's no mm -hmm. avoiding it at this point. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to shout out our collective brilliance because yeah, well, we we had. Stats creator. Uh, that was a three game series. But uh for three straight best of fives, we've had a five game series and they've all been I don't know if they I don't know how they compare to the other series, but they've all been really, really good. So, you know, let's let's pat ourselves on the back a little bit, Nate. And we uh we, we got the hey, right ones. It, <laughs> Bayo, it's it's been a while. It's been a while since I've been able to do anything involved with EPT or any of this stuff. And I just I just have to say it's been an absolute honor to get so many banger series with you. Yesterday was fun. Yesterday was back and forth. Yesterday the stakes were just a smidge lower. Today, again, we had we had we had stats just show up and show out at the beginning, even though that series was still very weird. And then just game five, three matches in a row. You can't can't I can't ask for more than that. That this job is easiest when the series are close because then you don't have to make up anything to talk about. And I don't know what's gonna happen in this final game, but I'm sure as hell excited to find out. Well, you know, there's one way to figure out what exactly is gonna happen, and that is to get into it. Site Delta. Game number five. And for the final time today here in the bottom right, at least for us, final time today in the bottom right in the blue, he's for Team Liquid. It's Cure. And his opponent in the top left, kicking it old school to get us here to the rubber match. He is Shin. All right, Nate. It's game five. Your 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 playoff life is on the line. You're two. You're one map plus one series away from hitting top four, qualifying for the Esports World Cup. You have one build to make this happen. One ap ah, okay. We're gonna say one approach because we're gonna talk about both players here. One approach to make it happen. What are you going for? I think when you look at like this map, probably. I, I don't know. I kind of like that expansive style out of Shin. Like when I think about what I want to see, I, I, I feel like the expectation for Cure has to still be something relatively standard, relatively straightforward. Like Terran, Terran players in general, you're not going to see as much range within those builds. Again, we did start the series with Mech, but I, I did not expect to see it again, and I still I still don't expect to see it again. So this this map, you're still going to be spreading out in both directions at the same time, so you, you end up stretching yourself very thin. I, I love the idea of Shin playing a big map control style. I like I like the heavy amount of lings into the Muta, specifically because this map is very large and there are multiple routes he can spread creep. So 
there's there's great potential for him to take big control, macro up, and just kind of eat whatever Cure throws at him. Because that's more or less how I felt the last game went. And you pointed it out too. But the other big thing we didn't see in the other games earlier is that there was nothing to deal with the drops. So actually having those mutas, he smashed them down, no problem. I maybe maybe I am being a bit greedy to ask for two mutaling bane games in a row maybe that is too much but i'm just gonna put it out there just in case in case the universe is listening well you know what nate the first start to manifesting something is to letting you it's just letting your your desires be known so i'm with you there give us another one and i think you're right we talked about that last game we're all kind of went wrong and well 20 supply of cure weight it, it went down off screen because we were looking at cure putting pressure on the fourth face and trying to make that happen again but losing 20 supply of drops for very minimal gain that's how you get stuck back at home. In fact, Dark was playing a style uh, a couple months ago before Infestors got nerfed a little bit. Um, and before, yeah, be actually, this was even before they, they got nerfed the first time. So they, before they lost the damage on the Fungal, where he would just go kind of Roach Ravager and get two Infestors, double Fungal off the first big double drop of the Terran, kill that off. And then Terran's like, can't do anything on the map. And you get up to Hive and you smash the Terran. It's just knocking down a double drop like that for very minimal trades. It's, it removes it so much tempo from the Terran. And we saw that happen in that game. Yeah, I, I, there was another thing you mentioned a couple series ago about Amphion specifically mm -hmm. that I think affected that last game tremendously, which we don't talk about a lot. But something something with these these big expansive maps like Site Delta being a great example, like look where the third is. To get from where Shin's third is to where Cure will take like that triangle third is a pretty reasonable distance. Even the linear third is still pretty far from that. But on, on Amphion, because they like you take that inside base, that sort of diamond pocket base, they're so centralized that the distance between the two bases where they fought at was maybe a full screen, maybe a screen and a half. So the counterattack potential was also accelerated by like that kind of claustrophobic setting. And maybe that's a part of what kind of uh, caused the game to spiral out of control as quickly as it did. So for Cure, maybe you just say, well, at least his units will have to go further to try to counterattack if I if I push too far. So maybe, maybe he just feels more comfortable here in general. Amphion is a weird map. It, it's fair to say there's only so many vetoes you get, a weird map or two has to squeak through the crazy, the crazy thing about that Nate, that you're talking about okay the, the rallies are really short uh between say the third base and the third base that's something that traditionally favors the terran it allows them to get their reinforcements across because you know bio is stimmed bio is fast unstimmed bio is not really and you it, it allows these parade pushes and these anti-muta plays and traditionally actually quick rallies are bad for muta games so I think it's really fascinating that we had one of those few games where that actually <laughs> yeah. worked out really well for the Muta player because once the Terran lost their army, they couldn't recover. But it, you know, Legacy of the Void, Heart of the Swarm, maybe different types of Muta play. It's interesting to see how this this rule that we have about how these games go just get sometimes it just gets flipped on its head. That's the cool thing about time, right? This is just the, all the things all the things that people say aren't worth investigating and like trying to figure out or do or try. Like eventually, eventually, it's 14 years. Hey, some people are gonna wanna try a couple of new things. That's one of the reasons why we get some of these changes. That's why we still get these different types of maps. And we've been on, and probably, probably I think one of the best things that this circuit has done is get away from just the seven maps, right? We've really opened things up. There's so many more potential permutations of maps that can happen in a series. And whether you love them or hate them, you still, you still have the vetoes, but you've just got more options now. And I think that's, that's never going to be, that's never going to be something that hurts to have more different ways that the game can play out. Yeah, not only is it, by the way, more maps, there are, the maps come up earlier. So it's not just like in a best of five, you veto four and then you pick five. It's no, you veto two, then a couple maps get picked. So players have this opportunity to go and say, yeah, I want to, I want to play Dynasty or maybe not Dynasty that gets vetoed out a lot, but like, I want to play a weird map. I'm going to get it into the first two. We're going to be able to open this series with that one. And it just, it allows players to shape the map pool to what they want to do. But for now, Cure, he's on the other side. He's got these Banshees here. He actually hit them for quite a while. So they would pair up. Cloak is done, but you know, Overseers are already on the field. So these Banshees, they don't represent a ton of threat actually. And behind this, Shin recognizes it. Okay, it's Hellion Banshee. There's not going to be a big bio follow-up, not for a while. He's double expanding. He's got his fourth and fifth base on the same, on the way at the same time. Uh, sorry, Nate, though. This is not going to be Mutaling Bane. This is Hydraling Bane. But on a map like this, with probably the most wide open map in the pool, Hydraling Bane, that's just this great big swarm totally of certain makes units. Sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. I think you have a couple of narrow alleys that lead into somewhere where the bases are. 
and that's just that just makes sense to have for the lurkers you know the it is it is a bit more open there are a few strategical chokes and frankly speaking almost all the games where we've had a reasonable amount of lurkers made whether it was versus Terran or Zerg in this tournament that we've cast We've seen the lurkers do some pretty fun stuff. Like we've had a good amount. Of, we've had like lurker, uh, lurker nitus. We've had some lurker drops. So you know, I'm. I don't feel like lurkers have made the games less interesting here. Not not this weekend. So I'm. I'm down with it. In fact, I guess it'll be the first time we see them in this this best of five. Yeah, certainly in this best of five. We had uh, Rainer playing a Terran. I think that gave us a, some lurker games. So we have seen a couple lurker games versus Terran. But yeah, for the most part, we're not really seeing it. But the meta is kind of moved on from that for the time being. So for now, the fifth base of Shin is shut down. And I don't know, maybe Kira... No, he doesn't think this is the fourth base. He knows the other fourth base is here. Ling run by on the other side. But Banshees have been kept at home. And are Banshees oracles and that they shred Ling? No, they're not. But they do make... They do put a timer on this Ling run by. So it gets in, gets like maybe an SCV, but not much more than that. Meanwhile, Kira at the front of the base here looks to maybe target some Banlings down. But uh, there are far too many Banlings and not enough... Not enough Marines. So... Here, knocks some creep down, kills off one of the bases, but Shin says, this is fine. I'm just going to expand north side. Let me flow like water around the map and just, just go where you're not. The Hellions are going to find those lings that hid in the bottom left corner. So he kind of does that pressure on the west side. But of course, stepping onto creep against this style, like what makes mm -hmm. this really good? Of course, a Hydralisks can turn into Lurkers down the line, but they're a little bit cheaper than the Mutalisks as well. You're not necessarily throwing them away as much. They're kind of helping you defensively. And then you can just have a crazy amount of Zerglings and Banelings, right? He's got 71 Lings, 28 Banes. So if you try to step on Creep to push into this, then there's just that huge overwhelming force that can jump on you. But this is where it's going to get tricky because the Creep is not over here yet. No, it's not, but the tanks are leaving. This. They're seizing up before everything is ready. So Banelings, they, they, yeah, sure. Banelings against tanks, maybe nice not the best. But he shut the tanks down. There's so much power removed from this push. Hydraling Bane on the rest of it. Yeah, this is not an opportunity that Kira has to push into. He's just got a backup run away. Maybe trade as well as possible. But eventually, this is a base that has to run away. And with the corners, corners are generally a Terran player's best friend, but not in this game. And now, Shin on the other side, taking advantage of a short rush distance. Just tries to get on top of everything. This feels like he wants to just make exactly what happened in game four happen again. But this time, here's me. Oh, no, he's not. I was just he's saying. getting close. He's, yeah. trying, he's bowling him over. The Marines kind of coming out slowly on the downtrend. I think when he shifted the Hydras to the right to get both of the, the auxiliary tanks that were not kind of in the fight in the beginning, that was such a good move. It's just this one close Banshee. Of course, there's no detection here, but the third base is forfeit. He's going to try and just get the tank. He wants to He wants to put, possibly push the win condition a little bit here, but the yes, CV's retreat. I think the only thing he doesn't have uh, an answer for, of course, is that planetary in the bottom. But let's not forget, this was off the back of Cure trying to make his first big push towards uh, that northeast base of Shin. And he's been able to secure uh, that the west expansion while all of that was happening. So he's got a great economy going. And for Cure, the upside of upgrades are still close. But, you know, Bayo, we just had this whole conversation about how the three typically finishes so much faster for the bio terran but against this style the way shins played it the way this game's gone that is not the case no it's not the three three honestly matters a lot less against hydraling bane than it does against mutiling bane because you have these hydras that they do a lot of damage at plus zero you might generally go and say okay i'm gonna get plus one ranged off of this as i get my hive complete and get plus three carapace on the way you're kind of okay with being at a little bit of an upgrade weirdness for quite a while just again because of how this army fights because of the power of the push Kira does have his plus three on the way now. At least plus three attack. He's getting mech attack. Going double tank, double factory tank against a bunch of hydras is a great way to play. But Shin has done the thing he did in game number four. He's pinned Kira back on his core four. Yeah, sure. Kira's got four bases, but Shin has so much of the map right now. He's allowed to go and get his hive done. Expand twice over on the bottom side. Take every base that he can realistically be expected. Eh, he's got one more available, but take most of the bases that he can say belong to him and Kira's just got a turtle there so is the game over for Kira? absolutely not but he's gonna have to sit on his sit on his heels for quite a while if he wants to make this his yeah, it, it's such an awkward spot we even got mm -hmm. we've got paul the the hydralisk on patrol uh, up in the northeast he's just waiting for that seven health medevac to attempt to go literally anywhere and uh, he's even gonna take a hatch there i'm assuming he's just he's ready to build a support crawler underneath that bad boy if he has to so it's been a lot of sharking around. Shin's like looking for these contingent forces that are taking out some of the bases. 
but at the same time, Cure is, he's not really, he's not really poised to take a head-to-head -head fight against any of this, and really where I think this strategy for Zerg shines is when you get the, the Vipers out, because it turns into a whole different ball game when you're trying to use those medevac boosts. We're seeing so many drops trying to get away because the Hydras can't chase them that well off creep. But Bayo, you just abduct them in, and those Hydras, they look real good. Yeah, one thing I love about this that we're seeing from Cure, by the way, and this we started to see Terran players do this a little bit more, is well they get a, around this hive timing where you know vipers are going to start to come out they get like two to four vikings and eh, they, you don't get it long term because well eventually uh, you know parasitic bomb and hydras and all these things they, they handle them but to deal with this first hit of vipers you get like two to four vikings and then you just kind of put them out with the front of your army yes maybe there's some abducts and blinding clouds but not a ton and vipers hurt a lot of gas they're not cheap and if you take a look at where shin is right now Yes, he's mining a whole lot more gas, 1,400 gas a minute, but it's not like he's got a bunch in the bank. 340 in the bank, he's maxing out here for the first time in just a little bit. And if you take those Vipers out, you really slow this kill timing down from the Zerg quite a bit. Yeah, that's it's, it's the most important unit, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of different ways to play Zerg versus Terran, but I, I, do, I do think that if you're good with it, the Viper is one of is just one of the best units to use to try and control some of these situations. Can use it on the planetary. The tanks, of course, is going to die for it. Blinding Cloud hits the planetary and one of the tanks. He's had over 50 Banelings coming into this fight. Now down to about 22. Still trying to push towards that third. A lot of them actually get redirected towards the siege tank, unfortunately. So he's able to get a few more hits off. But Shin is able to maintain his supply behind this we have four ultralisks being added 76 more lings and worth mentioning chitinous plating is done at the same time double drop is going to hit the northeast cure is cleaning up that hatchery and i think he might even go kill that hydralisk to free that poor medevac of marines that has been chilling there for the last few minutes he's finally going to turn around and there you go we did it we did it patrick we saved the city yeah we did we got two bases on top of it as well this is what i'm talking about the viper runs in gets like one blinding cloud off but the vikings they target it above anything else in the air you don't even have to micro it really they knock it down and you say yeah absolutely sure stuff went down the base went down not a lot of four tanks went down sure but it was a three three vipers died in that fight a bunch of hydras as well yes cure did lose stuff he lost position lost his fifth base but he killed two bases of his opponent he killed off a ton of the gas tech that shin was able to make and you said well the supply is steady yeah that's because he remaxed it fell precipitously in that fight Kira needs a fifth base. He absolutely does. But those are the type of fights. Ideally, maybe you don't lose the base, but those are the type of fights he needs to just start forcing Shin into because they are just not cost efficient for the Zerg player. Yeah, for Shin, it's about maintaining the resource, uh, you know, differential that he can he can have the less efficient trades, but still be able to overwhelm him. And I, I think you you draw a great point. The main base, it's cooked on minerals. Natural, there's 18 SCVs mining uh, out of four. That's, that's what the natural is for Kira at the moment. But it's also very risky to move all of his SCVs he has left to that base. I don't know. He still has 82 total for about three mineral lines. It's it's hard to understand. A lot of Banes and Ultras are going to come through this base one more time. Big Blinding Cloud put onto the tanks once again. And he's just going to go for that bottom planetary. Just pops that. And, well, I think we've, we've kind of talked about this a few times. But he does still have the other orbitals to reposition. But he is just making it so difficult for Cure to get into a comfortable economic place. Those Ultras being super annoying. But... Given enough time, I mean, these ghosts, we know they can really slow things down if he's able to get just one one central bulwark to defend everything from. Dude, five. I granted, this trade was a lot better for Shin than previously was, but five Vipers going down in this setup. Snipes going down on the Ultras as well and getting on top of this position now without a bunch of Banes just to force the ghosts out. It's not great. And even when you talk about Banelings versus Ghosts, this one Ghost is going to go down. He can't, uh, he's going to try to pick up and save a lot of them, but there are only four slots in the medevac, so a lot of these Ghosts getting caught out here. Cure very much overstepped himself. He thought he had the Ghost Town. He thought he had an opportunity, and this is the disaster. Yeah, sure, you lost Vipers, but if you take down the tech of the Terran, these Ghosts, really the most important thing, that and knocking the base down is always really nice but taking down those ghosts is by far the most important thing that as a zerg player you can do so now cure 48 workers he's got his four he's got these orbitals sure fine but only 48 workers the ghost count going down ultra's getting on top of things once again we're starting to see liberators go down cure played an incredible late game against rainer in the winner stage but shin is absolutely Ooh. taking it to him here cure's gonna lose the fifth base once again and this time it's an orbital this is mules this is scans you won't have access to anymore yeah, that losing that command center is gonna be very painful. It's it's still, ah, well, that's one of those things where it's like, if I drop the mule, there's no way it'll get there in time. 
Sag. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great pickup for him. And I was gonna say, it felt like Shin was kind of stepping a bit deep with his ultras. Those ghosts were getting some value snipes, but do you know there's again there's an angle for that and here's a fungal that's gonna land with it these marines having a hard time getting away the ultras are trying to creep up close enough if this fungal can deny the snipes to buffer that will help tremendously but there's a little bit of a choke created by that orbital command so he's gonna have to step off a little bit and i think if you're shin maybe maybe, maybe at some point you think about okay i don't want to overextend too far let him take the base again and stop me you know, do i do i have enough to push through the entrenched position i don't know 100 percent that he does so i i like I like where your head's at, though. He just needs to keep waiting for Cure to try to take the fifth. Deny that. Oh, and there it is. Wow. Yeah, sure. No, Cure was it is. very dead in that game. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm looking at the...